Hello, everyone. As you guys know that we are going to start new batch. Unfortunately, we are moving the uh, starting of the batch to 17th uh, uh, instead of 10th due to some uh, uh, issues. So like the previous batch, uh, still we do have some topics to be covered. And also I have some production releases in the next week. So I cannot handle it. I cannot handle the new batch uh, from 10th. So that's the reason why I'm moving it to the 17th. And here are the details. So it is going to start on 17th. Timings are going to be morning 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. IST. Uh, everyone are going to join at the same time because I cannot uh, uh, take any other time. And this is the only uh, time that I can uh, uh, conduct the class. And it's going to be Monday to Friday. So what are what and all that we are going to cover as part of this? The training will take minimum two and a half months for sure. So be prepared and do remember one time learning. That means if you can spend your time dedicatedly for learning for two and a half months and uh, with that knowledge, with that experience, you can achieve your things like improvising uh, your skills at your uh, uh, work location on Kubernetes or if at all that you are planning to switch the job or if at all that you are planning to complete the certifications, everything that you can achieve from this training. As part of this training, we are going to cover Docker, Kubernetes, Helm, GitLab, CACD, and Terraform. This training is for Kubernetes. To understand Kubernetes, what do you want to learn? After learning Kubernetes, what are you going to do with the Kubernetes? Uh, with the Kubernetes? That means you have learned Kubernetes, but are you going to only work with Kubernetes? No. You will be using the Helm, which is going to work on top of uh, Kubernetes. And you will be <clears throat> writing the CACD pipelines and you will be deploying them uh, in the Kubernetes environment. Right? So, uh, and we will be using the Terraform for the provisioning purpose. So, all together, it's a bundle uh, relevant to the Kubernetes. The GitLab CACD is also version, but we cannot uh, handle everything, how much that is required for us to understand and how are we going to handle with uh, uh, Kubernetes. Right. So the topics that are going to cover uh, are, <clears throat> I'll quickly go through them uh, with respect to the Docker. So these are the topics that we are going to cover. So Docker, we have Docker Swam. Uh, Docker is not small, as you guys know. But we will not be using only Docker, right? We will not be using only Docker. You will be using Docker and Kubernetes. If you go everywhere, uh, unless that, that's you're working in your startup, whoever using the Kubernetes nowadays, everyone has started using Kubernetes. So in combination, how you have to work. So you will be learning uh, uh, Docker, uh, how much that is required for you to work in the environment and how much that is required to understand your Kubernetes. So we will be spending more time on the Docker file, which is going to be very important. And even in the interviews, they are going to ask you to write the Docker file directly. So we have to spend good amount of time to understand how to write the Docker file because that is the source. Right, with respect to the Kubernetes, so we are, uh, we are learning Kubernetes with respect to complete the certifications and with respect to upgrade our skills to uh, to the new job. So uh, we will be discussing the concepts also in this uh, uh, in this manner. So I will be taking a concept. I will be explaining uh, who has to configure this, uh, whether this is a developer job or DevOps, or DevOps job. What are the best practices? What are the issues that you are going to see? And what kind of uh, certification questions that you are going to get and interview questions, right? So with this, uh, with this based upon your requirement, uh, you can uh, note down the uh, things accordingly, right? So we are going to understand the uh, core concepts of Kubernetes, scheduling mechanism, logging and monitoring, and application lifecycle, right? And also cluster maintenance, uh, security. Security, we are going to spend good amount of time because uh, uh, in the microservices world, when you have moved from monolithic to microservices, security matters. If security compromises, everything gets compromised, 
and we will be screwed up. So when we are going for the microservices environment, we should be very strong in the security. We have to follow them, that's all. That is the reason why we are going to spend good amount of time on the security. I know security by default, it is tough. Even when you are going for the Kubernetes, it is even more uh, tough, but there is no way. We have to learn and move forward. So I will try to explain my level best and I will ask you to repeat, repeat, repeat and uh, do the hands-on at the security because this is the area we need to highlight ourselves as a Kubernetes admin, as an SRE engineer, as a DevSecOps, right? This is the area we need to highlight uh, so that you will be having separate recognition, right? Storage concepts with respect to the volumes, persistent volumes, persistent volume climbs, storage classes, right? Uh, auto expansion, all this stuff we are going to discuss. Uh, and networking concept, even though that we are not doing much with respect to the network, but we will be understanding some of the concepts which are uh, which are required to understand. And uh, in this more important thing is like ingress, ingress and network policies. Network policies are something like, uh, you know, uh, which comes under security, but we can uh, talk even in the networking saying that uh, what is uh, uh, egress, what is ingress, port to port security within the namespace, namespace to namespace security, and also uh, a CIDR to the namespace, CIDR to the pod, all this stuff that we are going to understand because we are going to use network policies. Uh, most of the environments will be using the network policies. Right. <clears throat> and uh, Kubernetes is the hard way. So we will be initially installing Kubernetes on the VMs by using Kubeadium where we are going to uh, have the control on the master so that we have many tasks to perform on the master. Uh, and then we'll be moving to the managed Kubernetes. How are we going to manage the uh, Kubernetes on the cloud? So generally we'll be learning AWS and Azure. If uh, anyone wants uh, on the GKE, uh, on the Google Cloud, we are going to understand the GKE also, right? And, uh, yeah, uh, agro CD, agro, agro CD is also plays uh, an important role, but not everyone are using. For example, if you are uh, uh, creating a uh, Helm deployment and uh, uh, at the Kubernetes level, if someone gets changed, Helm cannot recognize and Helm cannot revert it. Unless again, you, uh, again, you try to upgrade the Helm release, right? So, but this is not expected. We don't want people to do that. That's why we will be using the agro CD. So agro CD is something like uh, it, it, that itself is saying CD. So continuous delivery. So it is going to match whether your Helm chart and uh, on the Kubernetes are matching or not. If that is not matching, uh, it is going to match according to your Helm chart. And uh, Istio service mesh, mostly, Nowadays, people have started uh, moving uh, uh, secure communication between the parts. By default, it will communicate on 8, 8080 port by using HTTP. Service to service communication uh, uh, within your Kubernetes cluster. But when you go for the uh, banking companies or uh, you know, more security they want, they are trying to implement secure way of communication and they want to have the metrics for that. Right, so with these requirements, people have slowly started moving to the service mesh. In the service mesh, we have many uh, kinds of uh, service mesh, but we are going to learn Istio as a service mesh. Istio can be used as ingress controller and it can be used as a service mesh. So we'll be, uh, show, I'll be showing both. And Helm, Helm is going to play a very, very important role. Uh, mostly we'll be discussing about the Helm, but uh, with uh, Helm 3, but uh, I, we will be discussing Helm to architecture, how to upgrade, uh, all this stuff that we are going to see. We are going to see some Helm charts that have been provided by the vendors already, like Prometheus, Grafana, right? Uh, Jenkins, all this stuff that we are going to see. And on top of that, we are going to create the Helm chart and we'll try to deploy that. And certification related, I'm going to give you the tips, shortcuts, and the expectations from you, whoever are preparing for certification is like, hands-on practices must and it's not like just doing practice forever no uh you have to set your time how much time that it should take for complete this spec two minutes 
max, right? So are you going to achieve that uh, writing the spec within two minutes? No, not, not in first time. Try in second time. Try in third time. Try in fifth time. You should be able to achieve that. Within two minutes, I should be able to complete the spec, ML. Right? That's how that we need to prepare. So for everyone, it is going to be two hours. But uh, for you guys, it is going to be one and a half hour and you should be able to complete within one and a half hours. And first time. Right? How do you manage uh, uh, time? Your certification. Uh, do's and don't do's. This is very important. Instead of do's, don't do's are uh, very, very important certification. Right? So with respect to the monitoring, you, you, you will be having metrics error by default in the Kubernetes that we are going to install. And on top of that, we are going to use Prometheus in Grafana. And then we will be starting with respect to the GitLab. So with respect to the GitLab, we are going to understand Git. Git is very, very important. If you are not understanding Git properly, and if you are not managing the branching model properly, you will not become a DevOps engineer. I am not bothered about the whether the developer is uh, uh, knows Git or not. But being a DevOps engineer, you are the one who is going to set the rules related to the branching, <clears throat> branch security. So you should aware of the Git. So then only there can be 10 teams of development, 100 developers. They will be having their own style of uh, uh, creating the branching. But you are the one who is going to release the code from the develop to the stage to the prod right if you cannot set the rules you will not be able to manage all these uh, microservices maybe 100 microservices you have to have manage them in the same style right you are the one who is going to set the rules and uh, your development team will be following that so it will it will make your life easy to automate them right we are going to understand that and uh, with respect to Terraform, uh, we'll be more talking about related to the Kubernetes because Terraform will not be learning everything uh, associated to the Kubernetes, uh, what is required for the Terraform and basics of Terraform. So with that, uh, we will be uh, taking approximately minimum, I am talking about minimum two and a half months. Be prepared. And uh, we will be uh, using the latest version of Kubernetes and I will be showing you I will be showing you how to uh, get this spec from the kubernetes.io. So with this method, irrespective of uh, your uh, uh, version change, if you follow the mechanism, the process, it should work even for the upcoming releases also. This is very important. This is very, very important. I know that 50% uh, of the people will be there in the class who is already working on Kubernetes or who have learned uh, Kubernetes from somewhere. Okay, so they will be having some basic idea, but they know the importance. If we don't learn Kubernetes properly, you will be keep learning forever. Try to manage your, your uh, other activities and try, try to spend time for the course so that one time learning, you will become master on Kubernetes. So expectations are you should be able to work independently in the production environment to remember. That is the expectation. I am going to teach you technology along with the process. Process is very, very important. Okay, we are going to learn both. Right. So, and uh, I know that uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, challenging stuff for, for everyone. But we have to accept some challenges uh, if you want to move forward. Right. So, the, one of the challenges here is that uh, to complete the course so with these conditions. It is for you only, not for me, right? So for your achievements, right? You should attend the class regularly. Don't miss the class unless it's a medical emergency. Normal works will come for everyone, but we, we try to manage them. Okay, second thing is that uh, uh, hands-on practice is must guys. You have to practice so today's class uh, uh, topic along with the task that what I, what I will be providing on daily. You have to complete them and you need to share the screenshot in WhatsApp before the next class. Otherwise, uh, I, I, I cannot allow you. How I will come to know that whether you are comfortable with the previous class or any issues, I should know right. Okay, and <clears throat> uh, try to be an interactive in the class. Don't sit ideal. If you have any questions, I will be giving the time for the questions. 
after each concept i'll be giving the time for the questions you have to ask how how many questions that you are asking so that much you will be learning not only you so in the class all are experienced people okay so if at all that uh, you may not get the doubt but somebody else can get the doubt okay so but i'll be uh, i'll be giving a dedicated time for the questions because questions are very very important right so <clears throat> whoever agrees to these conditions only join my batch otherwise please don't join my batch guys i want to make sure that all 15 candidates in my batch are at the same level okay i am running the batch to make people uh, expertise and kubernetes try to understand and meeting details are here i will be sharing the same meeting details uh, even in the video description and related to the course uh, people uh, will be registering by paying 2000 so uh, the remaining 23 uh, it is going to be split, splitting into uh, two parts the first part once after starting up the batch within first two days you will be paying 11500 and second week first two days you will be paying remaining 11500 <clears throat> okay so with this uh, uh, i am going to uh, conclude uh, before concluding i can say one thing whoever completes the batch at the end of the batch i am going to add them to my special whatsapp group the purpose of the group is uh, uh, in future if you have any questions after completion of the batch if you have any questions if you have any doubts or you got stuck in your work somewhere you need some assistance you can post immediately in the back in the, in that group so that group contains only kubernetes experts okay so either me or somebody else can respond you immediately and also any certification uh, course uh, any certification offers i am going to present there and also any openings that are there i am going to uh, give there uh, so it's going to be help you as long as you are working on the kubernetes maybe after few years you should be able to answer to the other other people who are coming into the uh, coming new to the kubernetes Right, guys. See you on seventeenth Monday morning, seven thirty a.m. Thank you.